like when i was 15 i saw mobathe i thought i should just break the gates of my school i went and so, got my hair after seeing kuch kuch hota hai yeah. films can only change your you know the the way you dress the way you do your hairstyle <laughs> they can't change, change your, your moral, moral moral values our country cinema has the power to influence The two questions that arise with the animal discourse that seems to carry on as the movie clocks in one of the biggest second weekends in Hindi film history are one are acts of violence and against the opposite for a narrative perspective justified if the characters meet a justifiable end aka death or having to lose everything and two when did film analysis become about critiquing the intellectual capability of an adult audience versus the content of the film everyone has recently been talking about the glorification of violence and use in animal and how through many portions of the film especially the second half it seemed like sandeep reddy vanga had sprinkled the dialogues with statements for shock value more versus how the character will organically react in a situation this ranges from the dig at rashmika complaining about her pads or cheating on her and telling her that she doesn't have the capability to cheat on him and that he will never let a man near her i always assumed ranbir's character in animal to be a mentally deranged and obsessive fool who borders on becoming a barbarian in the second half versus a hero who i should idolize irrespective this made me think about the context of the glorification in other films gangs of vasipur is a celebrated film that is considered in many people's goated list of indian movies a story of a man who learns that his father was killed and promises to not grow his hair back until he has avenged his father's murder sardar khan played by manoj bajpai was iconic in every way considered to be one of the best performances of the 2010s the protagonist is showcased to cheat on his pregnant wife but what's interesting is that the sequence of him getting caught is presented as a comedic sequence for the entertainment of the audience versus the character having any remorse for his partner the excessive ness of sardar khan is given free reign by the wife herself to do whatever with whoever he wants just that he should not bring it back to their home तुमको ठहरक मिटाना है जहाँ जाना है जाओ बस घर मत लेकर आना नहीं तो यही है चीज देंगे These sequences can be criticized for normalizing the men will be men trope so they're bound to cheat but the film is protected under the garb of the character being a village ruffian so anything goes the same movie presents Sardar Khan borderline Durga played by Reema Sen holding her face tightly asking her kaam kahe rahi ho itna bada ho gayi ho अभी तक बिया नहीं हुआ ऑल दीज मोमेंट्स लीड टू द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ ए न्यू रिलेशनशिप समथिंग दैट ऑब्वियसली ब्रेक्स द हार्ट ऑफ द वाइफ नगमा बट वन इज टू सिंपली एक्सेप्टेड बिकॉज दिस इज अ विलेज गैंगस्टर हु हैज नो कंट्रोल ऑफ हिज लॉइंस पीपल टुडे कंप्लेन अबाउट हाउ अनकंफर्टेबल दे गेट विद द हूटिंग एंड चेयरिंग इन द मोस्ट अनकंफर्टेबल एंड रिग्रेसिव सीक्वेंसेस इन एनिमल बट आई रिमेंबर सिटिंग इन अ थिएटर इन नोएडा फॉर गैंग्स ऑफ वासीपुर एंड द लाउड चेयर्स इन सीक्वेंसेस व्हेन सरदार खान ग्रैब्स Durga by the face the cheating the harassment use is the same but no one brings up the same topics of glorification normalization and the detrimental impact such portrayal has beyond the parallel of these films that present anti heroes as leads essentially let's talk about whether the means justify the end in a lot of the cases and the reaction of the audience on whether they felt wild acts committed by characters were heroic or problematic The most talked about in this case is from the film Bazigar. The father of a leading man is ruined by the villain who dies in poverty due to a heart attack. A son makes his mission to exact revenge. The lead kills one of the villain's daughter. All of this formulating as a plan to ruin the life of the villain. One can easily argue that Shilpa Shetty's character did nothing wrong and is killed more for shock value than leading the story forward. This just like the critique of today can be targeted towards the intent of the director. But most people imbibe this as Abbas Mastan's tool to showcase a revenge storyline. What's even more alarming is that the murder of Shilpa Shetty developed loud cheers in theaters when Bazigar was screened. But no one talks about the messaging of the film in the case of the 1993 film because everyone assumes it's pretty clear that it's a fictional revenge story humne khwab mein bhi nahi socha tha ke usko phekne ke baad wo shock to laga 
लेकिन शाहरुख उतर के नीचे से जा रहा है तो लोग सीटियां क्लैप मार रहे थे मतलब ये क्या रिएक्शन है तो अजीब आया कमाल है Is the act not stylized and glorified if it's leading to loud cheers in theaters? Is the act itself justified just because the character meets his end which is death in the conclusion of the film are all debatable topics. The one thing that people often talk about regarding Animal and the problem that they have with the film was the casual sexism dispersed throughout the screenplay and the twisted and toxic relationship shared between the characters. Reviewers assumed it just showcasing the sexism inherent in Sandeep Reddy Wang It reminds me of the scene where Bhikkhu Matre celebrates with Satya after coming out of jail. He gets scolded by his wife played by Shefali Shah for coming home late and being drunk. He gets annoyed of her blabbering and slaps her across the face. Isko nahi jaana, ghar aane ki zarurat nahi hai tere ko. Bol kar bas kar. Bas karne ke liye bol raha hai tere ko. Bas. Ekdam bas. They immediately make up and laugh with each other as if they just had a small squabble. but this never became a talking topic of normalization of domestic abuse so i realized it's less the scene itself and more a class issue right under the garb of playing a character who is uneducated from a village and is a gangster or a ruffian the abuse seems more appropriate i think the lack of consistency in arguments across films is slightly all over the place the aim is not to defend the themes of animal because i have been openly critical of several of its sequences but to present the cherry picking approach that becomes slightly frustrating rating in film discourse i find the argument very reductive when someone says that a movie like animal will produce several ranvijay singh balbirs or kabir singh will have people becoming functioning alcoholics because it is cool but there is merit to the argument that both extremes of bollywood the alpha male sigma edit and rooted fanboys and the smash the patriarchy at the excuse of defending every toxic decision are equally problematic You've got Kabir Singh who is abusive, petulant, arrogant and marks his territory on his romantic interests by giving threats to college juniors. The biggest issue for most in that film was that he slaps his romantic partner, gives her an ultimatum, calls her existence only being Kabir's girlfriend and still ends up getting a happily ever after. I mean you look at a movie like Tere Naam where the lead character constantly harasses the girl he likes. He threatens the girl's father saying that he will beat him up if he doesn't accept their relationship which has not even started by the way. The girl's lack of acceptance frustrates the leading man so much so that he abducts her and tells her how much he loves her. All of this is sidelined because of a few good deeds and a classic case of Stockholm syndrome follows as the girl falls in love with the man who constantly harassed and abused her. Is it justified just just because radhe eventually ends up in a mental institute knowing neer jara could never be his abuse is abuse and the cool manner in which the character was showcased it would be naive if someone denies his portrayal wasn't glamorized what helps in the promotional campaign of both tere naam and animal while being almost 20 years apart is that both the actors through several interviews have spoken about not idolizing the characters that they are playing in their movies jab main picture complete ho gaya main promotion pe jaunga to main bolunga picture zarur dekh lena lekin ye jo character hai saale wo kabhi follow nahi karna ye loser character hai ki ek ladki ke piche pagal ho gaye aur apni zindagi barbaad kar diye nahi hota nahi hota aage badho life ke andar baalon tak ki hair style wagera following theek hai kapdon tak ki following lekin ek jo ek personality ki following us film ki bahut galat hoti hai So you have to switch off as an actor. You have to have that ability because it's not fair for your loved ones. You know, आप किसी character में घुसी और घर आके में आके किस किस इंसान के जैसे भी करा था मेरे लिए मुझे मार दिया While I acknowledge so many aspects of these films to be problematic, let's take a deep dive into feminist portrayals and what they aim to achieve through their stories. I think the least problematic of themes was actually explored in Veera the Wedding. The much talked about self-pleasure sequence was actually so harmless, but the moral policing in this country can also get slightly out of hand. Slightly is an understatement. I mean if they can protest about Deepika's bikini color and the assumed notion that Rani Padmavati is being portrayed in bad light then a woman's right to self pleasure is going to ruffle some feathers the toxicity however that has especially creeped in with streaming shows is on the nose and quite frankly irritating four more shots please a classic case of three seasons passing and characters still under the garb of no one's perfect exclaiming ki duniya ko lag raha hoga we're all fucking up so we're fucking up right and they shout 
So here's to fucking up. I know this is a take of no one's going to have a perfect journey, but the several people who become victim to your adult decisions is where the celebration of the same becomes kind of problematic. In the case of a character like Damini, Jay does everything physically and emotionally possible to make her feel as comfortable as ever. And the moment her intellectual clitoris, something that I mentioned in the review, is caressed by political heritage, a rich dude basically, she can't help but be drawn to his charm. She only answers his texts, spends ample time with him and of course cheats on her boyfriend. But that's not even the problem. A case of cheating, right? What's worse that can happen? Imagine you confess that you cheated on your boyfriend and you make your partner feel bad about it. In a case of absolute gaslighting and a scene that will make you want to break the device you're watching this show on, Damini blames Jay for judging her every move and the pressure of not making a mistake actually made her cheat on him. In a casual spin of words, she shifts the blame of sleeping with someone else on him. All this protected under the garb of no one is perfect and everyone makes mistakes. Lowbrow feminist messaging in films like Thank You For Coming is embarrassing to say the least. Buzzwords and statements like self-love and smash the patriarchy are flung around with little care about the story and lacks any kind of depth. School kids shouting, Nahi hona patla mujhe, Nahi penna bra mujhe, Nahi karna peri pona mujhe, and the makers assume that we'll applaud them as if they've done something revolutionary. A show like G Karda, starring Tamanna, her character sleeps with her soon to be husband's best friend on one of her wedding functions, never comes clean about her affair during their honeymoon, papers over the cracks, and sleeps with the husband pretending everything is alright, only to get called out by a friend and then in a cringe climax states that she did not regret a single moment. A case of wanting to justify a woman's sexual need and exploration even if it is at the cost of cheating on a partner who did nothing wrong. While the spectrum of content is far and wide in Hindi cinema, I think it will be safe to admit that the messaging of these films are problematic across the board, even though they technically represent two opposing sides socially. And that was the video guys. Write down in the comments below what you think about these two opposing sides of Bollywood. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram, the handle's right in front of you, follow me at jammypants4. Also please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead. Thank you for watching.